so you're finally thinking of buying a video game console and you want to know what the best one is. If you've done any preliminary research, then you'll know that, while there are only a few major players in this market, it's actually pretty difficult to make a choice. All of them seem pretty good, and they all have rather ambiguous model names, making it hard to tell the difference even across brands. What's the difference between the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X? And what about the PS4 and the Xbox One in general? Are there certain games that only work on certain consoles and not on others? If you wanted to buy the perfect gaming console, which would it be? I can't tell you what the perfect gaming console is, really, since there is no such thing as a perfect anything. But I can tell you which are the best for different purposes and then you can pick the one that meets your needs. Sony PlayStation 4 Pro, Best Overall The PS4 Pro's design is derivative of the standard PS4 that preceded it, though we wouldn't say that it's an exact copy. Actually, a common running joke about the PlayStation 4 Pro is that it looks like two PS4s stacked one on top of each other. As a result, the PS4 Pro takes up way more space than its predecessor. Sony also did a bit of work on the interior. The 8 Jaguar cores of the AMP processor are now clocked at 2.1 GHz instead of 1.6 GHz. RAM capacity remains the same with 8 GB of GDDR5, but it is now running up to 218 GBS against 176 GBS for the standard PS4. The hard drive, at 1 TB, has 500 more gigabytes than the standard version. There is also a more powerful 802.11 acres Wi-Fi antenna, as well as a Bluetooth 4.0 receiver transmitter. As for the controller on the PS4 Pro, some changes were noted over the predecessor, though it still is, at its heart, a DualShock 4 controller. The touchpad has a light bar to tell you which player you are, and the buttons feel a lot lighter and more responsive. The switch between Bluetooth and wired mode is also seamless in the controller. The performance of the PS4 is high enough that, if you play VR games or have a 4K TV, you'll notice the difference over other screens. The data transfer process from an earlier PS4 is easy, as all you need to do is hook them together with an Ethernet cable. It can, however, be a slow process. That said, this console's increased processing power improves the performance across the table, including HDR, 4K, and VR games, which are growing each year. That improved performance can come in a variety of ways. Either you have games playing at 30 FPS at a 4K resolution, or you have more refined textures, or the ability to play a 1080p game at a higher FPS. Those with 1080p resolution TV screens may not be able to enjoy the improvements meant for 4K TV owners, but they will enjoy better frame rates in their favorite games. Xbox One S, the best gaming console for multimedia. The Xbox One S is a feat of engineering that wows anyone who decides to give it a try. It manages to put a powerful power supply and a 2TB hard drive in a chassis that's at most 40% as large as its predecessor, the Xbox One. The only sad part is that we may never know just how Microsoft did it. It probably has a lot to do with rearranging the parts on the inside and making for better airflow so the entire console is more densely packed but also more efficiently cooled. It might also include employing Santa's elves, and a bit of magic. The console also has an interesting overhaul over its predecessor in terms of the exterior design. Physical buttons have replaced capacitive for turning the console on and ejecting game discs and the USB 3.0 ports have been moved to the front face of the console. Unfortunately, the connect port from its predecessor is conspicuously missing. You'll need to buy a separate adapter if you want to use Kinect. The console is normally only sold in white, so you don't get much variety there. So at first blush, there aren't many style options. However, they do have special edition consoles in different color schemes that coincide with game releases. You can also have a third-party skin installed on your Xbox, 
and controllers can be customized through Microsoft's Xbox Design Lab program. Microsoft said that the chip on the Xbox One S is the same as that of the Xbox One that preceded it. However, the disk drive is Ultra HD Blu-ray capable of 4K and HDR. The Xbox One S does very well with Ultra HD televisions, though we wouldn't put it on the same level as the PS4 Pro. It is capable of 4K resolution, either upscaling games for you or offloading that task to your television. It also loads content much faster, even at the higher resolution, than the Xbox One, which was slower despite dealing with standard resolutions. Nintendo Switch, best hybrid gaming console. Take a look at the Nintendo Switch and you'll realize it's trying to do many things at the same time. Nintendo is trying to do something unique, much like they have done before. After all, these are the same guys that brought us 3D without 3D glasses on the Nintendo 3DS, motion-controlled gaming on the Wii, and now a hybrid console on the Switch. Understandably, when you set out to trailblaze like that, expectations and risks are going to be very high. However, the Nintendo Switch certainly found its target and over the years the sales have taken a significant uptick. When you buy the Nintendo Switch package, you'll find a console 2 Joy-Con controllers that are detachable a group that enables you to combine them into a single gamepad for play on the TV 2 straps for turning the Joy-Cons into individual controllers a dock which you can use to connect your console to the television for traditional gameplay those are a lot of accessories and they all come with great quality construction and ergonomics the whole setup is not only novel but also has a great cool factor the handheld mode with its analog controls, is something like the PlayStation Vita. The screen resolution is way better, though, at 720p. In fact, it's the best screen resolution I've seen on a handheld console yet. Nintendo Switch Lite, best for portable play. The main difference between the Switch Lite and its sibling, the Switch, is that the Switch Lite can only be played in handheld mode. You can't dock it for use with the television. As a result, it is lighter and more compact than the Switch. It comes with a smaller screen, at 5.5 inches compared to the Switch's 6.2 inch screen, but maintains the same 720p display. A direct result of this greater compactness is that the Nintendo Switch Lite feels much more comfortable as a handheld than the Switch. This is especially important if you have small hands. That said, I still think the most comfortable handheld Nintendo device is the 3DS, which isn't as wide as either the Switch or the Switch Lite. The controllers on the Switch Lite are also fixed. So no Joy-Cons with this device. On the Switch, the Joy-Cons were removable, so you could dock them to a central hub for use with the TV. Here, the controllers are fixed in place. I would have called them fixed Joy-Cons, except they don't have all of the controls that the Joy-Cons had. In place of the directional buttons is a D-pad which, to be honest, I prefer. It feels more natural to operate. Both the Switch and Switch Lite allow Bluetooth and wireless connectivity, though I have to point out that you still cannot connect wireless headphones to them. They also both allow for external storage via Microsk. The 32GB internal storage can therefore be easily extended. In terms of performance, there is very little difference between the Switch and the Switch Lite. The only major differences I experienced were that the Switch has a slightly longer battery life, doesn't have the HD rumble feature than the Switch has, and lacks an IR motion camera. You also can't play games built exclusively for TV on the Switch Lite. It only works with games that support handheld mode. Microsoft Xbox One X, best for gaming addicts. The Xbox One X is all about power. If you really want the cutting edge of power in terms of gaming consoles currently on the market, then it's hard to outdo the One X. Of course it will be outdone by Microsoft's new Series X slated for later this year, but for now the One X remains the king. The real win for the Xbox One X is just how much raw power it packs. 
It comes with an 8-core CPU clocked at 2.3 GHz with a 12 GB GDDR5 RAM chip. It also offers 6 teraflops of GPU power via an 1172 MHz clocked speed GPU. This is some serious computing power for a gaming console, and it's all for good reason, since it's all to enable native 4K HDR gaming. The only fill in the hardware department is the HDD, which is locked at 1 TB of storage space. 4K games are large, and so the HDD has a tendency to fill up pretty quickly. Because of its immense power, the Xbox One X performs very well. All the games look way better, whether they're 4K or only 1080p. In fact, for 1080p games, the Xbox One X does super sampling to improve the images. Super sampling works by forcing the game to render in 4K as if it were connected to a 4K television, leading to about 4 times the amount of detail as you would get at a 1080p resolution. Now, of course, this data can't all be displayed on a 1080p screen, but the detail will still be richer than it would otherwise have been. As a result, images look sharper and less jagged. Not everyone will appreciate this feature but people who really care about quality will love it. The full power of the Xbox One X is unleashed on a 4K HDR screen, where you can see output from native 4K HDR games in its full glory.